Raise your hand if you would like to use green, sustainable, renewable-based electricity. Yeah, me too. I assume that. Second, please raise your hand if you would like to pay more for electricity or you don't need that 24 hours a day or seven days a week. No one. I'm not surprised. That's the point. That's the problem statement. Is it not possible to have a green, sustainable energy network on an affordable price level? I guess the real question is how? To understand the situation around us, I have to give you a short summary about the past. What has happened in the last couple of centuries uh, in technology? The so-called first industrial revolution has happened at the end of the 18th century. The steam engine provided us the new solution, not to work alone with our own hands and so on. We could utilize the energy of steam. At the end of the 19th century, an absolutely clean, flexible energy resource became one of our best friends, electricity. And we are using it almost all aspects of our lives. At the 1960s, 70s, the next uh, pillar is the so-called infocommunication technologies, IT, computers, digitalization, and I'm more than sure that almost all of you have a small microchip and computer in your pocket. And rumor says that today around us is happening the fourth industrial revolution. Let's talk about cloud computing, fog computing, deep learning, artificial intelligence, IoT of I don't know everything. So all of these buzzwords are happening right now and not only in general aspects but in the electricity and energy field as well. How can we connect that? In the last six, seven decades, we get used to, to generate electricity with huge, mainly fossil fuel-based uh, power plants, with enormous transmission lines transmitted the electricity from one zone to another, and while the distribution system, it was provided at our homes. The way of the uh, electricity was one direction from the power plant until our homes. The end users consumed only the energy. And those enormous investments has uh, provided by states and governments. Today, many of us have solar panels on our rooftops. Many assets are possible to manage and control via mobile phone in our pocket. A lot of information is available and we can deal something with that. The way of the energy is get bidirectional. It can happen that a lot of the customers not only consume but feeding back energy to the network. And the whole power plant and energy mix is getting older and quite close to its lifetime. What kind of effect does it have to the stability of the energy network. For that, I would like to make a short demonstration. I will ask for volunteers to come here on the stage. Let's imagine this table is the electric power grid. You guys are quite strong, uh, huge power plants. Please go in each corner of the table. I will count one, two, three, and you should behave like a really good synchronous generator in one moment Raise the table. I will count. Please, please, please. Don't, don't make any blackout in the system. Okay, very good. You can put it back. Second, please, all of you go in one corner. All four of you. Let's jump in time a couple of decades. Many power plants have shut down, but you have the same strong in the same moment. Distributed energy generation has spreaded but you can connect the network only at one point. The issue is the same. I will count. At three, you will raise. One, two, three. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. The same power, but a little bit different concept. Thank you very much. You can lower it down. What are the key challenges that we have to face right now uh, in consideration of the energy network? 
If we are talking about resources, I have to stress out that it is not only financial resources. Physical assets, human resources, engineers, a lot of other resources are missing. Second, there is a silly joke if one woman can give birth to a child in one month, what can achieve nine women in one month? I assume not the same result. If I would have infinite amount of money, but lack of time, it's still not possible to build, for example, 400 kilometers overhead line in two weeks. No way. And third, there is no clear path. There is no such a cookbook or something. I can share my doubts with you, but I don't have the Sorcerer's Stone in my pocket. I'm more conspicuous about the future. However, I'm confident how to solve this situation. How? This catchy picture has the essence of the uh, methodology of Agile. We have to change our mindset. We have to recreate almost the whole energy network, taking into consideration all the aspects which are changing around us. Old habits are not working anymore. Experience, knowledge is absolutely crucial. But that's the way how we always do this is the main cause of the situation, what is happening right now. And I can't blame anyone. The time frame what we are talking about is far more wider than the changes time set what is happening right now. There is a saying that it's not such a big deal that we are going slow because we are going into a wrong direction. From one side, yes, we are running out of time, but from the other side, we have to be able to replan our route to reach our target. This requires a mindset change. As I stated at the beginning, I'm an electrical engineer. More or less, I'm confident about the behavior of the electric power grid. But what we are talking about right now, it's far more complex, let's say interdisciplinary, with economical, social, environmental, legal, and so on, and so on, other aspects. We have to cooperate all together with all the industrial stakeholders, and as there is no clear path, the only way to find the target is possible together. I am, with my research group, of course, committed to work out a new methodology for the changing circumstances, how to plan and operate the power grid of the future. And I will close my presentation with a quote from the European Commission um, climate document called Fit for 55. We are at a pivotal moment in world's response uh, to climate and biodiversity emergencies, and we are the last generation who still can act in time. Thank you very much for your attention.